Hi and welcome. Thanks for joining us as we take this opportunity to look at how we can utilize Office 365 on our iPads. So let's get started with today's lesson. Okay, so first of all, let's navigate to the whiteboard app on our device and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go into my Microsoft apps here and here we see whiteboard. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click to open this up. So when we're first in whiteboard, we'll see this blank page, which eventually will hold all of your whiteboards that you create. I haven't created any yet, so I'm just gonna start with the create new whiteboard in the middle. And you'll see that you have this very, very simple, but very effective drawing page that you can utilize. Now, the first thing to just highlight is the whole page can be zoomed in and out and you can see how those uh, grids become bigger and smaller. That kind of allows you to have this like infinite board to some extent that you can move around, um, et cetera, and zoom in, zoom out, depending on how you're gonna use it. Next thing to highlight are the pen tools that you have down the bottom. Now these are customizable, so you know if I tap on any one of them, I can say, do you know what? I want that to be a purple pen. I wanna be able to change the thickness of those pens, et cetera. And then I could say, well, I tend to not use red very often. I'm going to make this one a green one. So it's a really, really nice way to customize those pens. There's also some like really funky kind of tools that you can use if you want to, you know, change the look of how you're drawing on the page. Uh, this one's really, really nice. This is a rainbow pen. You can see how it sort of changes the color as I draw. Um, and then this one here is like a galaxy type pen. So similar sort of thing, but you see it kind of has those sparkles and looks a little bit more like space. So they're really, really useful tools that you can use and, and great for children to have a play with. I'm just gonna erase those off. Now I'm just using my Apple Pencil for this. It just gives me really, really simple control to access the screen. Um, but you know, you could use your finger if you still wanted to use your finger as well. The other uh, tool in here is a highlighter tool. So if I go ahead and tap on that, you'll see that I can just use that as a highlighter. And again, I can change the thickness just by going in and, and tapping over the top. So again, nice and simple way of just highlighting any text that you might have on the screen. Again, I'll just quickly delete that off the page. And then we also have this ruler tool. Now this is a really, really handy tool for teachers to use. You'll notice as I move this around, I'm just using two fingers um, on the ruler. You'll see that I can change the angle. Um, I could use this to measure something. And you know, if I wanted to measure the, the, the angle between these, it's at a 20 degree angle, um, but also I can use it to, obviously to draw nice straight lines at specific angles. So that's a really, really nice tool as well. And then the final tool on this little toolbar here is the lasso tool. So if I wanted to select something, I think actually I didn't want that where it was, so I'm just gonna move it over here. There we go, we have that option. The other thing to notice when we do the lasso tool, oops, is that we have additional options above as well. So we can copy and paste this if we want to, so we can duplicate that nice and easy. So if I wanted multiple versions of the same thing, so a uh, really, really nice way to just kind of navigate that canvas and play around. So they're the basic tools that you'll have um, within your canvas. Now there are some more advanced tools, some additional things that you can add into your canvas which make this really, really nice. So for that, I'm gonna go out and start a new canvas so I have a nice blank space. So here's my new canvas and we're gonna explore the options that are under the plus icon here. You'll see that there's a lot of things that you can also add onto this page. I can insert images, which will just open up my camera roll and allow me to add in any images. So if I take this image here, we can place that on my canvas. I can move that around, pinch to zoom. I can even enlarge the image itself on the page. And then I can draw directly onto that image. So I use it as a bit of a placeholder. But because the text uh, and the uh, image work together, when I move that, it's gonna move as well. So again, can be really useful if you're using it to annotate images for your students, uh, that the ink knows that it's meant to be on the picture, so therefore it's gonna move with the picture as well. Let's just move that out to the side. Next thing we can do is we can add text in, so it doesn't all have to be about digital inking, we can add text in as well. So I can add that onto my screen. And again, I can move that around if I need to just by tapping and holding. The beauty of using the touch screen device is I can just you know, touch something that I want to move and move it to where I need to move it to. 
We can also add in notes. So this is like having post-it notes on your device. And again, I can have these anywhere I want them on the page. I can increase the size, decrease the size, etc. change the angle, uh, change the colors of these if I want to change the colors. Um, and also I can write directly onto it. So again, lots and lots of ways to input information onto this whiteboard and start to use it in a creative way. Next thing that I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna actually show you on a different pane altogether. So let's move to a different screen again, just so we have the space to highlight these things. So these last few options are when things really start to take off in terms of how you might use this in education. If I tap on the plus, I can tap on note grid, which is here. And you'll see that it gives me this kind of pre-formed template um, of some grids that I might want to use. Now, this is really, really nice, and it just definitely highlights another feature which is useful within this, how you might use it in the classroom. So let's say that I wanted to quickly change, I'm gonna change these grids so they have different color. And then I'm gonna give three different options, maybe of food that you might want for lunch. So I'll say chips, salad, sandwich, so a really, really quick way to just create something to offer choice, but this is where things get really, really interesting. If I tap on the image itself, you'll notice there's a little thumb up tool here. Now what this does is it allows people that are using this grid to be able to vote. So you can choose which one you would like. Now, if it's only me using the grid at this point, it doesn't really have much impact. But we're going to show you a little bit later how we can collaborate on these grids with other members of the class which means now we have this voting system where one person can brainstorm an idea and everybody else can jump in and vote for which one is their favorite so now we're starting to see the impact there of how we can use this from a teaching and learning point of view there are other templates in here that you can also use so if i jumped into list view we'll see that we can create a list and something that's really, really interesting to do within education is I might want this to be a reading list. So I can just add in that reading list in here. So it might be, uh, what am I reading at the moment? Uh, let's type in here. So it be Drive uh, by Daniel Pink, etc. Oops. And tap done. And then that will be on my screen. Uh, or I might want to put in, um, start with why this is a good book. Uh, by Simon Sinek. There we go, can tap done. You'll see that it just sort of starts to populate that into my list. And then again, you know, if you've read it, brilliant, type, give me a tick. So we can start to think about how that can be a really, really useful tool in the classroom for different things. Some of the other templates then we have up here, a follow-up list, similar sort of thing. You know, what is it that I want to, to check in? Um, it could be that this is a whiteboard that I'm using with fellow staff members. Um, and it could be that we've set a bit of a project amongst us. It could be students using this as a collaborative project and they sort of assign a different activity. So they type in what, you know, what it is you've got to do. So uh, collect materials. Uh, and that's going to be assigned to a specific person. You'll see that it opens up my assign list. Now, at the moment, I am not collaborating. We'll show you how we collaborate in a second, but if I was collaborating with this on with other people, their names would show up here. I'd simply tick one of them and it would assign it to them. So nice and simple way that we can do that. And then again, at the end, we have that click to say, yes, it's been done or it hasn't been done or, or we like what's been done, whatever it might be. Last one then is the templates. Now this is great, I'm starting to build something that's useful for me, but we might wanna start with something which, which gives us that kind of overview that we know what we're doing from the very start. And if I tap on templates, we'll see we've got a whole list of templates here that we can choose from. And in fact, I'm going to go to one that's really, really useful in education. And lots of people will know what this refers to, but this, you know, what we know, what we want to learn um, and what we've previously learned. So this is going to sit on my page. I'm just going to move to the side, maybe give a little bit of space for it. There we go. 
So what you'll see here is it's kind of pre-created this grid for me. So I've got all of these grids in, in spaces that people might want to write in. It also gives me this overview of what it is we're going to use the grid for. So I can pre-make this and then share this out to the students so that they have an idea of what we're looking at over our project that we might be working on or the topic that we're working on in the classroom. So let's finally have a look at how we collaborate on this and how we can utilize Teams in order to have students all share the same screen and be able to work on the same whiteboard at the same time. Now, very, very simply, I can just tap on the plus here with the person. It's gonna create a sharing link for me. So once that goes through the process, it's just gonna give me this uh, turn on link sharing. It's then gonna generate that URL for me. Here we go, and I'm gonna copy that link. Now I'm gonna jump out of Whiteboard, I'm gonna to jump to Teams, and this is a class that we've been working on so far. We've got our breakout rooms that we created here. And let's say that I want the students in that breakout room to work on this project. Very simply, tap on New Post, and I'm gonna paste that link in and go. This is now a link directly to that Whiteboard. It's just gonna create that uh, information for me. When I click on that, it's gonna take me back to that Whiteboard. Now, anybody who has that link will be able to access this whiteboard. I've created it in that breakout space, so I'm limiting it to those students that I want to work on this project. But once they're in, they can all start to add, take away, vote, etc., all on the same document. So there we go. That's how we can use whiteboard and how we can collaborate on the same whiteboard amongst our class.